Hey guys, welcome to Found Flicks. The iconic murderous clown Pennywise is back in the hugely successful new adaptation of Stephen King's It. But there's a lot more to the creature beyond his trademark clown appearance. The movie gives a good overall idea of what It is, but there's way more to the character's backstory and mythology than seen in any adaptation so far. So let's dig into what It is, giving an in-depth breakdown of every aspect to the character from its origins to powers and everything else in between. Get your clown shoes ready because after this video you will be a certified it expert. First of all, the Pennywise clown appearance is not the true form of the creature known as it. It is an ancient demonic entity from a dimension containing and surrounding our universe called the Macroverse. Its true form is that of ghostly orange lights called the Deadlights a form of energy that originated in the macroverse. Its life essence is literally comprised of this energy and he uses the Deadlight's power within himself while in other forms to blind his victims and rob them of their consciousness, causing them to become physically immobile and go insane. It's also seen in the book that merely seeing the Deadlight's and the true form of it can cause someone to die instantly. We see the Deadlight's referenced in the new film via the orange glowing in Pennywise's eyes, as well as them appearing to Beverly in his throat, which causes her to go catatonic, though she doesn't go insane and is saved from her state by a kiss from Ben. But let's go back to the macroverse briefly, as it isn't the only creature from this dimension. His natural enemy also resides there a massive benevolent turtle called Maturin. Maturin also appears in the Dark Tower series as one of the 12 guardians that hold up the tower. He is said to be constantly withdrawn into his shell, rarely coming out for anything. On one occasion, he emerged suffering from a stomach ache, which caused him to vomit out our universe. The ancient turtle is mostly a spectator to the story's events, but does become involved in the final battle with it in 1958, where Maturin appears to Bill and advises him on the ritual of Chud, a psychic battle of wits used to defeat the monster. But if somewhere in this macroverse there's giant turtles and it floating around, where did they come from? Well, they too have a creator, a god referred to as the Other. It claims that the Other is the superior being in the macroverse, and although it and Maturin are in eternal conflict, the Other is safe from this. And it's possible that the Other is Gan, another character from King's novel said to have created the various universes where his novels take place, but also the real world universe where King writes his books and real world readers read them. It first arrived to Earth during the prehistoric times, causing a massive cataclysmic event similar to an asteroid impact in the area of what would much later become Derry, Maine, where it lay dormant until the arrival of mankind. Its awakening is always marked by an act of great violence, and another great act of violence ends its spree, where it then returns into hibernation. There are many tragic incidents in the town's history tied to its appearance, such as the original beaver trap settlers in the town who disappeared with out a trace. That is, except for a bloody trail leading to the well house where it resides, now called 29 Nybolt Street, or an Easter explosion that killed several children, a fire at the Black Spot nightclub, and many others that blight the town's past. Ben, doing research on the town, determines that the number of disappearances is six times the national average, and for children it's even worse. That's because every 27 years it reawakens, returning to the surface to feed and spread more chaos. Being an ancient interdimensional cosmic being, it is an extremely powerful entity with a variety of powers and abilities. Perhaps most notable is his ability to shapeshift. It can assume many different physical forms beyond Pennywise, but Pennywise is said to be its favorite form as the clown's friendly appearance works the best in hunting his favorite victims, children. The intent is to lure the children in with Pennywise, and after they have grown comfortable, he then changes forms into that of the individual victim's greatest fear. It has the telepathic ability to understand what we fear the most, which it then assumes the physical appearance of. He feeds on fear, specifically, and the reason he prefers children is that their fears are mostly simplistic and easy for him to take advantage of. And he describes the process of making his victims more afraid to be akin to salting the meat. Mmm, mmm, them good eatings. It's not that he is opposed to killing adults, they're just not as tasty. It also reveals its real name is Robert Gray, including to Georgie when they first meet, which definitely seems pretty odd. So what is up with that? Who is Robert Gray? Based on the fact that it assumes various physical forms, I might consider that Robert Gray is the name of a real man who at one point lived in Derry, worked as Pennywise the Dancing Clown, and was a real-life clown murderer. And it is assuming this man's form as Pennywise. At the time when
when King was writing the book, the real-life serial killer John Wayne Gacy was in the headlines, and it was especially odd as Gacy had previously worked as a clown, making the killings he did take on a very strange feeling with the serial killer having been so much around children. This makes the most sense of how King would tie that real-life horror into the true identity of Pennywise, but again, Pennywise and It are not one and the same. As beyond Pennywise, in the book, It takes on a huge variety of different appearances, like several of the classic universal monsters, like Frankenstein's monster, Gilman who kills a child Eddie, and the mummy who appears to Ben. It also takes the form of Jaws the Shark, a 30-foot Paul Bunyan statue, and a swarm of piranhas. In the new film, we see more of these, like a gross leper for Eddie, Beverly's dad, the creepy painting lady who appears to Stanley, Mike's burning parents, a decapitated boy, zombies, and of course, Bill's younger brother, Georgie. In the miniseries and books finale, it takes the form of a giant spider, which is not its true form, but the closest that the human mind can comprehend. And interestingly, the spider is actually pregnant, so it's possible that it is in fact female, but that could just be due to the specific spider form he took. So we see it has many physical powers, and there are a few in the book I didn't mention, like invisibility and teleportation, but there are also many psychic powers that it exhibits as well. One seen often is the ability to create physical illusions, such as the red balloon seen to imply its presence, or specific hallucinations like Beverly with the blood fountain in her sink. It can also control the mind and actions of a person, as seen when he influences Henry to murder his father after giving him a new knife. And after this, Henry still appears under its control, attempting to murder Mike and the others, or indeed kill them all as he's instructed. On a grander scale, it's implied that it has the entire adult population of Derry, or perhaps even the entire nation under his mind control, as they are all completely oblivious to the many murders that have been going on in Derry since day one. In the story, the adults are mostly presented as cold and uncaring, and just seem kind of weird. But it seems to be their weird behavior is actually the result of Pennywise's influence. And this would explain why Beverly's dad is unable to see the bloody aftermath in the bathroom, while the other kids are able to they aren't under the same mind control as Beverly's dad. With all these powers and abilities at its disposal, just how is it possible to kill the creature? Once again, it has been around since prehistoric times, and before that in the macroverse, so it doesn't age in any way and appears to be immortal. Also, as it is a celestial being, it doesn't have a true physical form, so it is unable to be killed or harmed by conventional means. They are able to wound it at some point, such as when it takes the form of a werewolf, and Beverly shoots a silver bullet at it, silver of course being a weakness to werewolves. So when it takes the form of a creature, he also takes on its specific characteristics as well. But none of that is permanent, and the only surefire way to defeat it is via the aforementioned ritual of Chude performed by the Losers Club working together, their bond making them strong enough to take him down. But it doesn't believe it's only their power that defeated them, but it was only by the other also working in their favor that gave them enough strength to defeat him in the end. Alright guys, that'll wrap it up for my in-depth look at the character of Pennywise, aka it. What did you guys think of the new version of Pennywise? And how did you like the new movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.